So here we are going to learn about energy and its conservation. So this principle of conservation is coming back again. We introduce momentum, it's a very important concept in physics. Then we see it under certain condition when you have isolated system, momentum, the total momentum, not individual momentum, the total momentum of the system remain constant in time. This is conservation. So similarly, we will introduce energy. It's another very important concept. Uh, and then we will see it also obeys this law of conservation uh, for an isolated system, All right? So let's look at the content. Good morning, Omar. Uh, the contents, observation about energy. So we'll just introduce you know, we will look at, you know, this energy, observe, uh, kind of introduction, then we will define work. And you must be wondering what it has to do with energy, a lot, okay, so we will see that. Work, not the, the normal, ordinary definition of work, physics definition, okay. Energy is not the ordinary definition, physics definition. We are very precise, you know. We'll... And then there are two kinds of, what we call mechanical energy, kinetic and potential energy is the sub of the energy. Then you will see if this mechanical energy consisting of the kinetic and potential energy, can it be conserved? Okay, we'll put it as a question mark. Yes, under certain conditions satisfied, it will be conserved. We will look at it. Right. So what is kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is the energy stored in the speed of the object, okay? If an object has a speed, a non-zero speed, if it is not at rest, it has kinetic energy. You know the word kinetic mean motion, right? So it has to do with motion. Zero speed mean, kinetic energy is zero. If it has a speed, it has a stored kinetic energy. More speed, obviously it is going to be more kinetic energy. Good. Then that is another thing called potential energy. It is stored in a system when an object is moved upward against the force of gravity. That is, you know, being, he's being specific, gravitational potential energy, any force, uh, special kind of forces, conservative forces will have associated with it what is called potential energy. You have heard the potential gravitational potential energy. If you take, okay, if you take a rock and you take it above the Earth's surface, it will have a big potential energy. Yeah. If you bring it close to the surface of the Earth, it will have smaller potential energy, gravitational potential energy. That potential energy depends on the position stored you know, uh, in a system when an object is moved. He is giving for the special case of gravity, but there can be potential energy for other forces as well. It is associated with the force, okay? So the gravitational potential energy associated with the gravitational force. Okay. Earth's gravity. Potential energy. Can we say an example like a rocket? Like when the rocket uh, no, any object, okay, if it is under the gravitational pull of the Earth. Uh, yeah, well, uh, if it is moved against the gravitational force, you know, there are going to be some energy going to be stored in that object as the gravitational potential energy, because you are moving. So the gravitational force is trying to pull it down, right? And you are moving it up. When you are moving it again, you are moving it against the gravitational pull. So it is going to store more and more gravitational potential energy in that object. Uh, instead of the normal force, yeah. No, yeah, you're talking about the normal force. I mean, no, we just take an object, okay, and you keep it here. It is a certain distance from the uh, Earth, right? Now, if you want to move it away from the Earth, you are working against the gravitational pull. So you, you're doing work to move it up. That work will be stored in the object as the 
gravitational potential energy. Okay. So if it is closer to the earth, okay, it will have a less potential energy. If you move it more away from the earth, you know, you have to do work because the gravitational force is trying to pull it back. And you are moving against, that means you are storing some energy into that object, which is the gravitational potential energy. So the potential energy is a function of the position. Kinetic energy is a function of the speed. Okay, more speed mean more kinetic energy. Okay, anyway, we, we, I mean, we are just touching the subject. Okay, we are, we didn't understand everything about it. And then we will become slowly uh, getting more and more information about it. Okay, so right now for the time being, of course, there are so many questions in your mind, but you know, you have to be patient. I cannot tell everything at once. It's not possible. Right. So let's, let's move on. Uh, okay, for each of the two objects on the next slide, draw its height above ground and its speed as a function of time. So let's look at that. This is the object, you know, this is one of the problems that comes in you know, again. It was there in chapter four, when you applied the Newton's second law, two objects, big mass M on the table, connected to another mass, hanging mass, Okay, I have a question, Abdullah. What is the meaning of potential energy without using gravity as an example? Are you telling me, give me another example other than gravitational force, right? Abdullah, is that what you mean? Yeah, okay. Uh, spring force, you know, you, you take a, a spring, you know what, what, what I mean, right? You know spring, you know what is a spring? Yeah, so pull the spring, you are doing work against the, because the spring tried to pull you back, right? It tried to go back to its original position. So when you pull the spring, you are storing in that object, say you attach object to the spring and pull, move the object away you know, by stretching the spring and the spring tried to pull it back. So you are doing work against the uh, spring force. So that spring force is also conservative as a class of force where we can define potential energy. So that is another example. Satisfied? Okay. But you know, we will start with the one that we already know, gravitational force, then we will bring in the uh, spring force also. Right, very good. So we got this question here. We have two objects connected by a string, uh, by a pulley. And there are some question about these two objects, the, uh, the box and the hanging ball. They're going to move, right? When you release, it will move. Hanging ball will go down, okay? Because there's a gravitational force, although there is a, a string tension in the upward, but there is a gravitational force downward. It is going to be pulled down. So with that, the big M will also will be moving horizontally. So we are asked to plot a graph of height of the object, or the distance, height of the height of the object, of say for the mass big M against time. Will it change? For the big mass, it will be the same height, right? Before it hits the pulley, okay? So it will be like this, height of the object. What about the small mass? What, is, what about the height of the object? It will decrease, right? How will it decrease? Like this, or like this, or like this? I think the first one. Uh, okay, let me call one, two, three. Two or three. Two or three. Okay. Okay, fine. That is correct. Two or three. <laughs> is it three or two? Uh, two. Two. Okay. Yeah. Because we know it's going to be accelerating. It will. If it is. Constant velocity and coming, constant speed and coming down, it is, uh, no, wait a minute. It is, it is, it is not two, it is not three. It is one. Okay, <laughs> right. Will you agree with me? It will accelerate, it will, speed will increase. Okay, yeah. It'll go become, there is an acceleration. It is not 9.8. No, it's 
okay why because it is not a freely falling object it is the only you cannot say the only force is gravitational force there is tension also freely falling object is only force has to be gravitational force right here we have another force so it is not a freely falling object however it's constant there is a constant force there will be a constant acceleration smaller than 9.8 but still there is an acceleration okay so as it goes down its speed will increase it will start with zero speed as it goes down the speed will increase okay so you know height versus the it has to be it has to be like this slope is the speed right it is not this this mean constant speed slope of height versus time is the speed straight line mean no newton's second law if there is a constant force there will be constant acceleration yeah. i mean there will be acceleration constant ac not speed yeah, acceleration. acceleration so now here the slope is the speed yeah. not acceleration so if you choose number two, you are saying it is going down with a constant speed. Okay. So it is not correct. Okay. 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 So we know the speed is increasing. So two is not correct. Okay. So it is either one or three. Is it one or is it three? Why? Should increase, right? So the slope here it is increasing at the magnitude of the slope if you look at this it is okay it is decreasing it start with the big slope and it becomes smaller and smaller okay now what about the speed then speed is increasing linearly because a constant acceleration it will be the same for small mass also okay it will be exactly the same. They are connected together. So when the speed of this is uh, zero, this will be also zero. When it is one, it will be also one. They are going together. Right? Because uh, of the, so one, yeah, because the direction of the velocity. No, no, because the speed is increasing. If you look at one and three, what's the difference between them in one, the slope is increasing. In three, the slope is decreasing. Okay. Okay. So this is the graph. So we got it correct. Okay. No, no. This is for the big M. This is for the small M. This is height against time. This is velocity against time. Okay, this is for big M and this is for small M. Okay, that's what we had before, right? But the way we draw, I mean, we put the big M here and the small M there. Okay. Okay, right. Let's move on. Right now, we're going to we introduce energy. Okay, we said there are two types of energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is associated with the speed. More speed mean more kinetic energy. Potential energy is associated with the position, but there can be different potential energies. Okay, it can be from gravitational force. And somebody asked me, Abdul asked me, you know, can you give me another example of a potential energy coming from? Yeah, from elastic, I mean, spring force, right? So there can be other form. That is not the only, there can be many more, okay? So well, now we are going to introduce work. Now, what is work? Work also, we will introduce heat. Maybe heat you will understand very quickly. It is similar. It refers to the energy that flows it is transferred into or out of the system. So, you know, heat, if you take a flame and heat something, the energy flows into the system. Even if the system cools, 
energy comes out of the system. Similarly, we can introduce energy into the system, out of the system by doing work. So you like, you know, when you take an object and you move it up, up, you are doing work. What happens is potential energy increases, right? So you can increase also decrease at the same time. So that is what work. So the term work also later the term heat, probably we will not be able to go into heat, refers to the energy that flows. It is transferred into or out of the system. The term energy with the description like a kinetic or potential energy uh, is used for energy contained within a system that may convert from one form to another. So we are talking of energy contained within a system and you might, there can be transferring occurring from one form of energy to another form. Kinetic energy can become potential energy and potential energy can become kinetic energy and so on. Okay, now then we have to define system. What is a system is the term we use for object or objects, many number of objects, a collection of objects of interest. So we will, maybe there can be so many objects, one, two, three, okay, four. Let's say I will take this as my system. So we choose, okay. Let this be my system because I want to study that is that particular system consisting of only three, three of these objects. And the rest is environment out of the system. So that is what we mean by system. And we call everything else environment. So this is our system. Everything else is the environment. So environment plus system consists of the universe, everything. Okay. So simple definition. Right. So here we can talk about three groups, uh, three classes of system. The first one is uh, isolated system, then closed system and open system. Okay. So what are the, what is the difference between them? Uh, in an isolated system, Uh, nothing goes in or out of the system to the environment. There is no transfer of anything. So we have this, this dashed line, okay, that tells you is locked. Energy cannot flow in or out of the system. And uh, matter, matter also cannot go in and out of the system. Isolated system, it's completely isolated. You know what is matter, what is energy, right? Energy is something, energy we just defined. Uh, matter is uh, physically some substance, substance. Nothing, a particle or anything cannot go in or out. So that's why we have, we have two uh, fences, two dot a dashed line there. Matter is not leaking in or out. Energy is not leaking in or out. So that is isolated. You know the word isolated, right? It's completely blocked, locked from the outside. Okay. Our closed system, we relax one of them. Which one? Energy. Matter is still not leaking in and out, but energy can be transferred. So that we call closed system. And the third one is when we relax everything. Energy can go in and out. Matter can also go in and out. We call this open system. So closed system is the one that is, you may tend to forget what it means. Closed system means energy can go in and out. Matter cannot, okay? So that is closed system. And the isolated system and open system, now you know what it is. Example. How can I give an example? Okay, right. Okay, the human being. Are we closed system? Let's say I, I myself, okay? Can I say what, what, what? Okay, very good, you asked me. Now tell me, am I a human being? Is he a closed system, open system, or isolated system? Yeah, we breathe in and out. The particle, what we come, ours goes out, goes in, you know, we excrete and, you know, matter is, leaking, 
and uh, energy of course leaking you know we 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 release energy we bring in energy when you take food we eat food there is energy that comes with mat when the matter is leaking there is no way energy has to be leaking as well i mean there is i mean you cannot have a system where can you have a system which is leaking the matter but not leaking the energy cannot because when the matter is going in and out energy is going going to be going in and out okay so so you ask me for an example okay i gave an example you want an example for the other system well, i cannot think of anything now a human body is a open system what do you mean you don't eat food the food, let's see when you eat food yeah when you excrete you breathe no but okay when the food is in your body it is your is part of your system when you excrete it leaves your body it is open system okay but sometimes what you do for a certain period of the time we want to solve some question we will assume okay i can say assume when this is happening for that short period of time the human body is a, a closed system for that particular question for for a particular reason for that particular time frame we can say consider approximate it to be a closed system okay but in general if you ask me in general we are open system i mean we are related to the whole cosmos we <laughs> right we we are not isolated or you not even closed to system we are open system close well, okay matter is locked but but energy can be going in and out oh yeah of course we can have example but let's 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 don't don't worry about it now i i know if i start thinking i might i don't want to you know i want to finish this lecture okay we don't worry okay so it's good you ask question but you know sometimes you you should try to find the answer on your own okay right let's let's move on thank you okay now a system is in equilibrium when all its essential physical parameters are time independent so again we are talking about system now we introduce another concept when you say something is in equilibrium we talked about equilibrium before right mechanical equilibrium remember if the net force is zero and if the net torque is zero it is in mechanical equilibrium now we are talking general more general context when you say when a system is in equilibrium then everything is time independent it does not change so there are mechanical equilibrium what is not change is is a uh, so momentum is not change when we have a uh, net force is equal to zero the momentum is constant with time right momentum does not change with time so now we 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 are going to make it more general not only momentum a system a complete equilibrium all essential physical parameters are time independent you know the meaning of independent right it doesn't depend on the time so when t equal to 0 if the parameter has the value equal to 10 something after t is equal to 10 second also it will be the same value so it does not change with time so that is the very general definition of equilibrium it's not just the momentum only you know, any other essential physical parameters should remain without changing with time okay now we are jumping to more concepts uh, we are going to be more mathematical now so we understood work we kind of understood energy and so on now can we give a, a mathematical formula a definition mathematically for the work yes that's what we are going to do now work is the scalar product of two vector quantities force and displacement you know what force is you know what displacement is right that's what we learned so 
we define the work, work has to be done by a force, right? So when you move something, you're applying a force on that object and you're moving it to another place, right? So displacing the object using a force. So when you do work, actually the force from you is the one that is doing the work. So we can define the work in terms of the force and the displacement. So we say for a constant force, it doesn't mean, you know, can we, does, it's not to say that we cannot define the work for non-constant force, we can, but it's become going to be a bit more complicated. So we will start with the simplest one. So for, for a constant force, the work done is simply the product of the force with the displacement. Remember, we define the torque. Torque is the product of the position vector, not displacement. Okay, should not confuse. Multiply by the force, but uh, uh, it's this is a special kind of product. Okay, there it is actually we call the vector product for the torque. It is equal to the magnitude is equal to position r multiplied by f multiplied by sine of theta. Theta is the angle between r and f. That is vector product. Now here also it is the force, but not the position vector, but the displacement of the object. They are not the same. Unfortunately, we have to use the same symbol, right? The r. But you have to understand here the r is the displacement. There the r is the the position vector drawn from the point in question to where the force is applied. It's two different things, but they both have the same unit because force multiplied by some distance, right? So same unit, but two different things. So the work for a constant force is equal to the force multiplied by the displacement because you move, use the force to move an object from one place to another place. That means you are doing work the work done is equal to the product of the force with the displacement again, but it's a special kind of product because force and displacement are both vectors. And this time, the magnitude of this product is given by Ft cosine theta. See the difference. For the torque, it is Fr sine theta. For the work, it is FD, this is the displacement, that is R, this is displacement, that is position vector, the distance from where you want to take the torque to where the force is applied, that is not nothing to do with displacement. But here, you are moving an object from one place to another place, you are doing work, the work done is equal to the force multiplied by the displacement, but it's a special kind of product, okay, multiplication, we call it, uh, scalar product, okay. that is vector product. It's two vectors, but we multiply them in a, in a special manner. And the magnitude is given by F into displacement into cosine of the angle theta. Well, what is this theta? Simply the angle between the force and the displacement vector. The theta is the angle, like there for the torque, it is the angle between F and the r vector. Here, it is the angle between f and the d vector, the displacement vector. So you can also say, I mean, remember again for the torque, you can say r into f perpendicular, but here, because it is cosine theta, it is f parallel. The parallel component of the force will the, is the one that will contribute to the work. For the torque, it is the perpendicular component is the one that will contribute to the torque. Here, the parallel component is the one that will contribute to the work. Okay, so um, I hope I made it clear, hopefully. But anyway, you know, you have to, um, we will be doing question where, you know, it will become clear. Shall we? So, uh, okay, theta, but again, you have to be careful here about the theta, unlike for the torque, here we have to make sure that theta is the smaller angle between F and delta R, because it's cosine theta. For sine theta, um, sine of 180 minus theta is equal to sine of theta. So it doesn't matter which of the two angle we take, the smaller or the bigger. 
But for the cosine theta, it is important that you take the smaller of the angle between the F and delta R. And also it is important you bring the two vectors tail to tail before deciding what the angle is. Okay, just um, this, I have to do a question and explain it better, but I will let me mention it now. And uh, another thing, the work done is a scalar. The torque is a vector. Torque has direction, right? Counterclockwise direction out of the plane, out of the screen, or clockwise direction into the screen or into the plane. So torque is a vector. It has direction, but the work is a scalar. It has no direction, like energy. It has everything to do with the energy, right? So, okay, so work is a scalar, it has no direction. But can it be positive, negative? It can be positive, negative, okay? But it doesn't mean it is not a direction. Negative doesn't mean it is an opposite direction, anything like that. It is just like temperature. If you define, depending on where you put the zero, it can be negative, right? Temperature can be negative. But does it mean a direction? No. Like that, work can be negative, but it is not an indication of the direction. It has a meaning. Let's come, to, we will discuss that. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, let me explain that. Let's say you take an object and you apply a force. Okay, you apply the force like that and move it and you bring the object here. You keep applying the force in the same direction and it will move horizontally only. So this is your displacement. So let me call it D and this is your force. So displacement from initial to final. Okay, so the displacement direction will be from initial to final. So this is the force and this is the displacement. Okay, now, if I draw the force from here and I draw the displacement like this, this is the tail of the vector, this is the tail of the force vector, this is the tail of the uh, displacement vector. You know the term tail is where it starts, head is where it ends, okay? So this is the tail of the displacement vector, this is the tail of the force vector. Now I have drawn these two vectors, not tail to tail, okay? I draw the displacement vector and join it to the head of the force vector. Then if I say this is the angle, it's wrong. You have to draw the two vectors tail to tail. So I have to bring this vector here. So then I can say this is the angle. And you, someone can argue, why can't I say this is the angle because that is bigger. So that is the next, next condition, smaller of the two angle. And also you have to bring the vectors tail to tail. Okay, now this is important. When, I, when we were discussing the talk, I didn't bother too much about this, about bringing tail to tail and all, because it is sine of theta. Sine is a bit flexible because it doesn't matter which angle you choose. So therefore it doesn't matter whether you bring tail to tail or not. But here it matters because it's cosine of theta. What about the unit? It will be Newton meter. Uh, like torque, torque also the unit is Newton meter. But for work, I introduce something extra. I'm going to call Newton meter, when it is uh, for work or uh, energy, I'm going to call it Joule. So the Newton meter has a special name, Joule. But don't use it for torque. Torque is also Newton meter, right? So if I say Newton meter, let me call the Newton meter as Joule. Why don't you call Joule for the torque? I mean, no one can object to that. But it's an understanding, we don't use it. So we know only for work or energy, I will call it Joule. For talk, I will not call it Joule. 
I will say Newton meter. Okay, this is agreement. Okay, we just we have an understanding. That's all. Okay, right. So we have question. Yeah, Nura. Yeah, we should take the smaller. We have two things, Nura. We have to bring the two vectors tail to tail, and then take the smaller of the angle between R and F, uh, D and F, displacement and force. So we have a question. In first first atom, you lift a dumbbell in the gym one meter off the ground. So let's say there is uh, some object here and you lift it and bring it here one meter. In the second atom, uh, the trainer make the say one kilogram, so one Newton and so 10 Newton, let me say 10 Newton object and you bring it up. Now trainer make it 20 Newton now. Now you are asked to lift it, but this time you are lifting only half a meter. Before it was 10 Newton, you lift it one meter up. Now it is 20 Newton, you lift it only half a meter up. Question, in which atom did you do more work? Why? Yeah, but here you are lifting one meter. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't look at the, I, it is half a meter, right? Because the work done is the product of the force. The force will be equal to the weight, right? So you'll be applying a force this direction, equal to the 10 Newton, and you are moving it one meter. Here, the force is 20 Newton, but you are moving it only half a meter. So the product is the work. 10 Newton multiplied by one, so the 10 joule, you are doing the amount of work, 10 joule. Here you are multiplying 20 into 0.5, that is also 10 joule, 20 into 0.5, 10 joule. So the work is the product. So in both cases, you are doing the same amount of work. So C is the answer. How did you, no, uh, okay, Abdullah, uh, read the question. Abdullah, can you read the question? Yeah, does, does, didn't he say that? The, in the second atom, you now succeed to lift the only by 50 centimeter. I, I wrote it there. Okay, is it good? So one meter, 50 centimeter is half of one meter, right? Isn't it? How many centimeters in a meter? 100 centimeters. So 50 centimeter is 0.5 meters, right? Yeah, okay. Oops. Right, uh, another question. Okay. Again, testing, you know, whether you understood the definition of the work. You know, not the work in the normal sense, but the physics definition. You hold a rather heavy picture frame, somebody, you know, and toward the wall, you hold the frame like this and you're asking your friend to see where to put it, okay? So to decide how to, where to put it. And you hold it like that in one place. They debate the issue lengthily and you get tired holding the picture. Finally, after more than a minute, you lower the frame. How much work you did you do on the picture while holding it up? While you are just holding it like this, you get tired, but did you do any work? Why? You know, displacement is zero. Okay, but I'm, then why did you get tired then if you're not doing any work? No, according to the definition of the physics definition of work, work done by the force you're holding it, the work done by the force that you're holding the picture frame, that work by that particular force is zero. But of course your muscles straining and doing, I mean, of course the other work going on in your body, but I'm not interested in that. My question is the holding the frame up, is there any useful work done on the picture frame? No, because that it is not got displaced. So our definition of the work is simply the work done by a particular force is equal to the force multiplied by the displacement and the cosine theta, of course. Yes. So the answer is zero. Now we have another example. 
Next slide shows an object on an inclined plane that form a 20 degree angle with the horizontal. An external force F of magnitude, 10 Newton is applied. Nura says gravity, what was that for? Okay, anyway, I didn't follow what she means. So that question was, what is the work done while you are holding the frame up? Work done by the force that you are supporting that frame, okay? That particular force has not done any work on the picture frame because the picture frame did not displace at all. The displacement is zero, therefore the work done is zero, okay? Period. So let's look at this question now. Uh, now this is, okay, more standard problem. Uh, okay, let me show the picture just to quickly get what is going on. Okay, it moves one meter. This is the one. Okay, so we have an object. Oops. We have an object, and this object is uh, displaced and brought it here. All the while, this force is applied on the object at the same angle. So this is the displacement. The direction of the displacement. Ball is from here, it is brought there. How many meters? Uh, a distance of one meter. The magnitude of the displacement, this is one meter. Okay, so this is the picture. Now you get the question, right? You, you understand what the question is. And the question now, I mean, the picture, what is the question? What is the work done? What is the work done? So tell me, for a, it's a constant force in the same direction, same magnitude, but the displacement is along the incline. So according to the definition, the work done is equal to Fd cosine theta. Okay. The sign will be given by the theta, okay? So it can become negative. You know, cosine theta can have a negative value, right? Cosine theta can be negative. Is sine theta cosine? Okay, say so it's sine theta against theta. It is like this. So it become negative. So cosine theta will be like that, okay, this is, it can be fluctuating. When theta is equal to more than 90, sine theta, or cosine theta is negative. When theta is more than 180, sine theta is negative, okay, so. You did learn this in your math, right? Okay. Didn't you learn sine theta, cosine theta? The violence, yeah. It can be negative, positive, of course it can be negative. No, come on, come on. Don't blame on others. You know, that's a very bad thing to do. I mean, you do. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I hope nobody shouted at you. <laughs> but anyway, now, see, sine, okay, fine. Sine zero is zero. Then it come to one at 90 degrees. Then as you go to 180 degrees, it become less and less. It is always between one and minus one. After 180 degrees, it become negative. So at 270, it become minus one. So this is the sign form. Okay, okay. all right. So it can become negative. It's cosine theta both. Cosine theta follows a curve a little differently. Yeah, it is the complement of this. It will be at zero, it will be one cosine theta. Then at 90, it will be zero. And then at 180, it will be minus one. This is how, okay. Right? You should know this, you know, math. Of course, I know you're doing medicine, but still you're supposed to learn math, right? I mean, math is uh, something. <laughs> uh, I question it. Anyway, 
No, you need you met this an essential skill, you know, you need it. You know? <laughs> then you don't have to learn this also in that case. Uh, these are kind of skills that it is it will help you in other field, you know. I, I, if you are just treating a patient still, you know, the math knowledge is essential. I don't think it is useless. Do you say that it is useless? Yeah, yeah true. Well, let's not argue now. <laughs> Continue. Right. So now let's let's do this question. The definition is F D cosine theta. That is my blue. Okay. The definition of so this is come here. So this is the displacement vector, and this is the. So now tell me, for work is F D cosine theta, and the cosine theta will take care of the sine. Okay, because cosine theta can be negative or positive. So that means work can be negative. Now F is given. Let me go back to the previous slide. Is it given? Ten newton. Theta is 20, meaning this is 20. Let me call it alpha. What is the definition of theta? You have to bring the two forces tail to tail, very important. It is already, luckily it is tail to tail. Okay, this is your D and this is your F. So no problem, it is already, luckily it is tail to tail. So that means theta is this. Let me use another color, 80. This is what oh, I sure it is 80. Let me call it theta. We don't know yet. Okay. Now, this is alpha is 20. Okay. That means this is 20. And this is 60. So, what is theta? 40. Okay. Good. Oh, okay, we know everything. Just substitute and get the answer. Okay. Don't be in a hurry. Okay, you know you should uh, okay. slow down and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it is. Suppose this angle is more than ninety, work will be going to be negative. I showed you right. So how does the cosine behave? At zero degree, it is one then it become less and less. At 90 degrees, it is zero. After 90 degrees, it become negative. Okay, then go up to the minus one, then again, it returns to zero. At uh, 270, it become zero again. Okay, power. Okay, right. Power is how fast the energy is being uh, transferred or how fast the work is being done. So it is work divided by time. The time rate of work done is the power. So it's like, you know, two people may be doing work. Say you do 10 joule of work. I also do 10 joule of work. Let's say I take, say, uh, to, to move something from one place to another. I take, say, one minute to do that. So it is the same force I apply, but I take one minute to move, move that thing. You apply the same force, but you do it in half a minute. Who has more power? You, because you do faster. So that is the idea of the power, okay? We both of us spend the same amount of energy, okay, doing that work, but I do slowly, so I have less power. You do it faster, so that is power P. Okay, so the, for the work, I can substitute the definition of the work done in terms of the force and the displacement. Then I can group this together and you can see this is the velocity. So the power can be shown for a constant force. It is also equal to the scalar product of the force and the velocity. Work is this work done by a force is F into ah 
Uh, you mean, mm, okay. Well, it is actually delta R. Delta R means final position minus initial position. This is final position. This is initial position. This is delta R. So delta R is D. Okay, delta R is the displacement. So another symbol I use, okay, can, you know, it's the same thing. Right. So we are coming to that, you know, I was keep telling about this work can be negative, right? So the mathematical sign of the work is positive when the work done is work is done on the system. It is negative when the work done is by the system. Okay, Lau, how do we understand this? Maybe, oh, stop here. Yeah, okay, Raida, right, okay. Uh, yeah, I will stop. Okay, I think we have class. Okay, thank you. So it is Manal, Abdullah, and Judy. Okay, I will mark you.